morning, Wararapa. Nice to be here um, today at the Maria Koto. Um, back with Aging with Attitude with Susie and Anthony. I hope you had a really good Christmas and a great New Year. I mean, say, Susie, what was Christmas like for you? Oh, kia ora, listeners. Um, Christmas for me was extremely busy because I'm. I'll try to be the hostess with the mosties, <laughs> and as I'm getting older, it's becoming a little bit of a challenge, but um, it was all good. We had lots of family around um, several times, um, uh, celebrating Christmas and, uh, yeah, enjoying each other's company and doing a bit of day trips around the countryside. Went to Napier for a couple of nights, which nice. was fabulous. I encourage anyone that is wanting to do a little short trip. Um, Napier's just amazing. It's changed quite a bit since we used to go and visit a lot with the kids when they were younger. Um, but it's still a great place just to, um, just to, I don't know, relax. Um, you know, somewhere by the sea and some pretty good shopping. Okay, um, uh, because you see that in terms of Napier, would you like to give a particular fish and chip shop a shout out? Yeah, big shout out to, um, let me see, it was the Flying Dutchman, I think, Fish and the Chip at uh, East Pier, around that area where the shed, you know, all the sheds are and the bars. It is fabulous. They have um, beautiful fresh fish, really fast service, perfect chips, my husband assured me. Maybe I'm not a huge chip eater, but um, yeah, in fact, I ordered the fish burger, which I would normally not eat burgers because I try not to eat too much carb <laughs> or bread. Um, but it was absolutely delicious. And he ordered the um, blue cod, uh, which was perfectly, uh, I think he had it crumbed actually. It was it was really fabulous. Next time we go, we're going to go back there and, and have some more. Although I must say we ate at uh, Lake Ferry on Friday. Oh. So a bit of a shout out to the hotel there. That was really They have lovely blue cloth there. They do. They had um yeah, we had a lovely meal and um yeah, forgot how hard it is to get to the, the beach from there. So that was a bit of a mission. Took the car around um to where all the main car park is um at the beach and there was a few, you know, big dips and quite close to the to the cliff. Um but yeah, it was um a lovely adventure and I must say it was very popular. Mm. And we had we had to wait, or sort of you know waiting for a table and then quickly rushing in to grab that. But there were obviously people there with their grandkids um, and yeah, Wairarapa and Wellington people there as well. I think. Mm. So that's the Flying Dutchman in Napier. Yes. Okay, and also the Lake Ferry Hotel. As I said before, I can vouch for um, the blue cod that was served at Lake Ferry. It is fresh as mm. and delicious. So, but I want to pick up on something that you just said just, just before, and it was, <laughs> because I'm getting older, it's getting harder to host, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like me as well, I, I have, I feel like I'm obligated to have to find over because this is where they normally come. This is, where, and I found that as well, and I'm thinking to myself, how can I lessen the impact on myself? Um, but still enjoy, you know, not having to cook all the time. And all, but I, I feel like that I'm supposed to be doing all the cooking and all the hard work and not realising that I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of strategies um, can you think of? In the future? Yeah. I think um, I was extremely well organised around um, what I was, what we were having, because I refused to go into the supermarket in that last week. Although I did make a, a sort of evening trip, but um, that is that was fabulous because I didn't have to wait for any, you know, those huge queues that go around the freezers of all the, you know, supermarkets and the heat and people are grumpy yeah. because they're hot and they're tired and they're waiting. Um, so I, yeah, I missed all that, which was really great. Um, and I think just organising, maybe accepting other people's offers of help because, you know, we try and, and as you say, host and, and do everything yourselves. But mm. realistically, you've got to, yeah, be prepared to accept help um, and just really plan ahead. Mm. Yeah, do things the night before Christmas Day. 
don't be out late on Christmas <laughs> Eve. <laughs> um, getting a good night's sleep, resting up. Um, because the weather, of course, as we know, in December was not like it is um, this month. Luckily, uh, it was a little bit cooler on Christmas Day, which was great. <laughs> because, Luckily? Yeah, because I think people really, it's hard to keep motivated in this heat. And mm. if you're not up early when it's a bit cooler, doing your odd jobs. Um, I do remember a lady once um, that I was speaking with, she was in her 90s. And she said, Susan, I get up at five o'clock in the morning and I have everything done by nine and then I go back to bed for a little nap. And I thought, wow, I can see where she's coming from with that because we're so much more motivated when we get up in the morning um, and in this weather it's a lot cooler, mm. although today it's quite muggy. Yeah, um, it is. But yeah, organisation and accepting other people's help and yeah. Mm. Even having, I suppose, a potluck for Christmas lunch. Mm. Someone do the spuds, someone do the salads. Yep. I'm the ambrosia girl. You're the ambrosia girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Someone doing the good desserts. For, good for potluck dessert. <laughs> Easy peasy. <laughs> and it's got yogurt in it, so it's sort of healthy. Yogurt and fruit. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Yeah, so those are the strategies. And I think, I think as we get older, we don't like people offering help because we start feeling that we're not coping. Mm. Um, but realistically, um, yeah, it lightens the load and there's no stress with that. Yeah, I think I, there was a, wasn't there a, um, an Osmond, Jimmy Osmond sing a song like, he ain't heavy, he's my brother, something like that? Yep. Yep, mm -hmm. and so I think we have to take that type of attitude in, into it as well. Mm. Yeah, it's a family thing. It is. So let's make it a family thing instead. Instead of just um, the head of the family, I am, but I accept help, as you said, and it's hard sometimes mm. to let go of those rings. Mm. Mm. I remember one way, um, daughter, she went to um, this particular event, and they asked who was uh, who could make the ikamata, the uh, the raw fish, and she said, "I will." And this lady walked in after she made it, said, "Who made the raw fish?" I have to test it before it goes out. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> but in saying that, what I'm alluding to is that sometimes we just have to let go and know that either one, we pass on those skills and those recipes so that it will be the same. Yeah, and allow the younger generations to come through because that's what should happen, a succession plan. Mm. Who's going to carry on mm. um, the Your values? legacy. That's exactly right, <laughs> a legacy. Yeah, yeah. And so you brought up another interesting point too, Susie, and that was in terms of the weather. <sighs> Slip, slop, slap and wrap, whānau. Mm. Otherwise we're going to be like chocolate fish and melt everywhere mm -hmm. and get burnt. Okay, but also with that, uh, and it's not joking, um, we know that sometimes our older whānau forget to drink. Absolutely. Yeah. And they become dehydrated and they become very, very ill. Okay, so if I know, um, encourage uh, your kuia koroa to drink you know, water, cup of tea, whatever. Mm. Not alcohol because alcohol dehydrates you. Okay, um, but to remain, re uh, to remain hydrated. Yeah, I um, it was interesting because I'm a huge water drinker, but I've noticed... You know, if I'm not at the gym drinking a lot of water, I have to make sure that I, you know, purposely fill up a, a cup or something like that. Mm. But I've um, taken up buying soda water. Oh, yeah. uh, it was a dollar fifty, I think, the, the the cheaper brand at Countdown, and pop it in the fridge. Um, and it just is a that the little bubbles in it make it a lot easier to drink, or it feels, um, yeah, feels more pleasant way. to drink. And a lot of people complain. Um, or say, you know, I hate drinking water, I just don't like drinking water, you know, I need to put something in it. But sometimes when you add things, then you're adding, you know, sugars and stuff like that as well. But, um, yeah, soda water, I did check it, and there's, I think there's a little tiny, tiny percentage of carb, maybe. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a lot more easier to drink, mm. and, yeah, seems to be fine. Mm, or even um, put in some lemons, lime, mm. orange, a mint, whatever, just to change the flavour if you don't like the flavour. Mm. Um, as for me, like, 
I perspire a lot. And so I need to drink water, but look after my salts as well, mm. especially on these days. Mm. It's shocking. Okay, so whānau, um, look after your kuia and kuroa. Make sure that they're, they're uh, hydrated. Yeah. And those kuia and kuroa, uh, if you're listening, let them help you. <laughs> <laughs> let them help you. Okay, but do please um, stay hydrated because you become unwell otherwise. Mm. Yeah, it's very easy to... Um get urinary tract infections if you're not drinking enough water to, you know, that to flush. flushes out your system. Yeah. And as we get older, um, I understand that you don't notice it as much as what you would as a younger person, so mm. it goes unnoticed, and then you can become quite dizzy and disorientated. So, um, yeah, just watch out for that um, sort of sign of um, dehydration. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you a sign that my mogul said to me. He came up to me and he, he said, Koko, come here. And I went, what? And he pinched my uh, my hand. Oh yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing? He went, oh, I'm just seeing if you drank enough water today because if your skin stays standing up, you need some more water, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, mine didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it went back to the normal shape. But that's another test that you could do. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah, please, please um, drink and don't forget, as I said, slip, slop, slap, and wrap, mm. because and our hat. son and hat. <laughs> yeah. And hat. Yeah, that's really important. Another thing that, um, one of the things that I did uh, over the holidays was go and look at some of the um, the reserves that we've got in the Wadarapa. We've got a lot of lovely places. Mm. Just go for a walk. It doesn't have to be a long walk. It can be a short walk. Um, but we've got so many nice places um, that I didn't even realise that we had. Until my daughter said, let's go to Wars Whare, let's go to Puka, let's go to the Pinnacle, let's go here, let's go there, let's go everywhere. And it was beautiful. You know, so a little time out, as I said, it doesn't have to be a long time, but it's different. Mm. It changes um, what we see in our normal day life because uh, a lot of us just stay in the one area. Yeah, I hear Mount Holsworth is great too. I've got some old family friends that go there for about, I don't know, probably about 10 days um, after Christmas. Um, they've got great little campsites there and you're right by the river. Yeah. Um, and, and they, they meet the same people um, yeah. every year, yeah. which is great. They don't plan it, but they um, you know, just meet up with people or make new friendships and get entertained by mm. young people that come in and out. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they've got some beautiful walks here. Yeah. You know, nice, easy walk, gentle walk down to Donnelly's Flat. And then they've got those other, the hut uh, walk as well. Lots of others um, that are more challenging for the seriously challenged and blind. Mm -hmm. um, but those who are just starting out. You know, and most of those nice walks time. are under the canopy of the, of the right. forest, which is great because it keeps you a lot cooler. It keeps you a lot cooler, yeah. 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 Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, check those out. Even go to Pukaha Whanau. There are tours there now. Uh, and the marae there is absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Um, feeding time. You can go there at night time as for feeding time. Oh. Yeah. That'd yeah. be a different different look. <laughs> it, yeah, it was. Um, my grandchildren uh, went out there and really enjoyed themselves. Um, just sitting or holding wetters. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. What are you there for? Because they were cool, cool, cool. They look cool. Yeah. yeah. Little robots. Yeah. <laughs> and so, as I said, the What It Up has a lot of things to offer, you know, other than the beaches, which are absolutely gorgeous. I was quite surprised yesterday I went out to Tora. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Went out there. Got some piles and crayfish. Oh. Um, yeah. Where's but, mine? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought that because leading up to Christmas, um, that there'd be hardly any around um, in the shallows, but there were heaps. You know, all little ones, you don't take them, of course. Mm. Uh, but it was a good opportunity for my grandchildren, who um, the ones that I took out were um, five, six, and two eight year olds. And so. They were able to get in the rock pools, see some starfish. Starfish! <laughs> uh, my, my, uh, my granddaughters got their first kinners. <laughs> that was cool. And the other brother, he was um, out there with his mum 
learning how to dive and it was quite good to come back and make sure everything was legal, right number, measured up, great. You really any meth guys out there? No, no, we thought that there was someone coming over because this person came over, but they were just seeing if they could um, get some shells, oh. you know, some bio shells for their children. So shuck the couple, here, mm. have the shell, all good. We actually headed off to um, Parapara Umu, took mum over there a couple of weeks ago, or it was a Friday after Christmas, in between, whatever, I've lost track of time. Um, and that was my first experience on the... The new motorway, what's it called? Transmission Gully. Holy moly, that that's actually a good sight to view. It's like amazing. It's got all sorts of interesting irrigation systems running down the hills and it's, you know, spent most of my time looking at <laughs> admiring all the the amazing Scenery. environmental, you know, stuff that goes on with building um, yeah. big motorways. But that's um yeah, that's really changed that area. Mm. Um, but every time I go to a beach, I take a couple of bits of um, driftwood that attracts my, um, you know, some of the, I think I bought a piece home that looked like a, uh, looked like a lizard's head and the other one looked like a bird. Um, and I tried to show it to my son when I got it home and I was like, can you see the lizard's head, the face, you know, the eyes? And he's like, Mum, I can't see anything in that. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. Maybe as you get older, you just <laughs> see different things in, <laughs> in different lights. But, um, yeah, that was a great place to go. Um, we actually went into the pet shop there, which was interesting. And had a look at the birds. I must say, I have sort of miss, I guess, the, um, I don't know whether people would remember the aviaries that we used to have at the park. Um, because birds are really amazing and there were beautiful, there were some love birds there and some beautiful finches that were amazing colours mm. and my mum really enjoyed, you know, looking at them and yeah, yeah I know I haven't been to the one at the park, um, the recent one that's still got peacocks there, big, Yeah, he was, um, just, he was showing off yesterday. Yeah, yeah. but the little birds that used to be in the aviaries mm. were really lovely to watch. Yeah, mm. and the other part of it too is that um, for those who are the older generation um, to share the stories that you know you have mm. that they have uh, with the younger generation so because it's in our stories that we learn lots about our, our history mm. it's in our stories and I don't mean the history of New Zealand but you can but I'm meaning the history of our family absolutely yeah I think being near the sea is such a big part of a lot of our family history for most whānau because mm. we've all been out to the beach at some stage but um, yeah mum remembered the love that sitting watching the waves and mm. you know could see out to um, Kapiti Island and things like that and she remembered having you know been in the area visiting yeah. over the years and things like that so it's yeah it's nice you don't have to go anywhere expensive you can just go and sit yeah. and watch and be entertained by other people <laughs> going by and you know, just having um, uh, kai on the beach is really lovely. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We did that yesterday. We had a, a bit of a picnic and had some um, portable cookers. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was really great. It's yeah. quite an adventure, isn't it? Oh, it, is. it just <laughs> reminded me when I was younger, when we as a whānau, um, this was um, the Rimini uh, whānau at uh, Te Ori Ori. Uh, we used to go out all together and uh, get our supplies and dry things for the year. Mm. Um, but, you know, just being down the beach with everyone was great. And there used to be about 60 of us, I suppose. Mm. I camped down at Wakateki. Yes. That was good. There's some, there used to be a marae there. Mm. And so we were camped down there and just remembering all the fun times and, like, sharing those stories, as I said, um, with uh, my grandchildren now because that marae isn't there no more. Mm. Um, but they didn't know unless I tell them that there was one. Yeah, and the things that we did around that area, to tell them the stories around that area as well, and uh, how Kupe and their whiki or Amuturangi was in the cave at uh, Castle Point. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, and how he chased it down to Wellington. And then that's how you got Soames Islands and Machu. Mm. Well, Machu is Soames anyway. Um, but if you don't tell them those stories, you know, how will they know? Mm. You yeah. know what, Anthony? What's that? Susie? You've become a treasure in your <laughs> fine life. <laughs> well, it is about, as you said, legacy. And the only thing you can do with legacy is invest in it. Mm. So, yeah. whether and, it's money or whatever. Yeah. And as younger people um, listen, mm. 
and spend some time with um, with our elders, Komatu, and and learn those things. Yeah. I think um, we've probably spoken to about it before. We're quite busy in our lives, and most of us are working in our sixties, um, and it's hard to actually stop and listen mm. because our older people take a long time to talk about these stories, and it's um, yeah, it's showing respect to to actually listen and, and mm. as you say, pass those stories on yeah. as well. The other mm. part of that too is that you've just brought up is that when we listen to those stories, we have to actively listen. Mm. Otherwise we forget what they said because yeah. our mind's going. But it, it teaches us to slow down. It teaches us to slow down. So if we do that often enough, we can do that in terms of um, everyday occurrences where we can just stop reflect, take that moment and let everything go, mm. then carry on with our day. Yeah, another nice thing actually is um, with our older um, whanau is to actually go, like I, on the weekend I actually cleared out my, um, I didn't make New Year's resolutions because I I know sometimes when you say it out loud it becomes something that you ha actually have to have a <laughs> commitment to, but I, in my head I thought I'm going to tidy up all my my messy drawers and the first one I came across on Saturday morning at I got up about seven when it was nice and cool were a lot of photos of um, mum and my dad when they were younger um, so that sort of made me think you know those sorts of things I need to go over with mum and write mm. you know write things down because you, you do think that you're going to remember someone talking but um, it's good to know dates and things like that so later on you can actually research um, things as well and um, yeah that's a nice thing to go over photos with um, family yeah um, and then you hear a different story because you these photos are taken when you're younger mm -hmm. but if you hear the older person talking about what was going on you actually see a different side of, of what that event was you know a, a picture does hold well is it a thousand words yeah. um, and and that's um, a lot of that is made up by um, you know, what people feel, how they felt um, at that time as well, mm. which is really lovely. Staying connected. Yeah. Staying connected. Yeah. I remember, um, like, some of the pictures that I looked at and I was going, who's this? Who's this? I don't know who these fellas are. Then I asked one of my sisters or an aunt, oh, this is a person here. And the story continues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it'll just stop with me. <laughs> Remembering, though, that everything is like a puzzle. Mm. There are different sections to the puzzle, to the bigger picture. And we hold, um, as in a valued sense, a portion, a portion of um, that picture, mm. that puzzle. So, yeah. Anyway. That was really quite good, just... Reminiscing. Reminiscing. What's that song from Little River Band? Reminiscing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Susie. You need to play it. I, oh, yeah, I'll find it. <laughs> um, anyway, the age concern. What are some of the uh, activities that they've got coming up? Do you know what's their um, calendar is it for this year? And the calendar for this year? Um, I, well, for the summer months, anyway. Well, hopefully everyone got a copy of our... Our um, Christmas edition, uh, which was your, our summer edition, it was, um, with a beautiful, beautiful harakiki flower on it, which nice. I've got some growing at my house. Where are the tuis at this time of the year, I ask? Should be in your garden. Mm, well, they haven't come yet. I need to do some calling. <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, this month is pretty quiet, age concern, um, while people are enjoying a little bit of a break for the year. But um, from next month, um, actually, I think some of the activities are starting up. I must check. Let me see. Um, the trips, uh, the February trip, we are still finalising that. But if you call later in, in the month, um, we should have some idea about what that w will look like. I know that um, Sue Mason was looking at some activity to do. Um, for a trip away. Um, all the coffee mornings resume in February. Um, so Marston is only going to be every second Tuesday of the month, so it will still be, it's going back, reverting back to once a month. Um, Where's that going to be held? That is still currently going to be held at Solway Showgrounds, so hopefully everyone's enjoying that um, that venue, but I know we enjoy working at Solway Showgrounds because yeah, it's, it's great. A, 
a lovely spot. There's no rush. Um, I know some. if you've been in town over the holiday period, you'll notice that town can be quite busy, very hard to get parks where you need them. Mm. Um, so the showgrounds is a great um, opportunity for people to, yeah, get out um, and have a look around at, um, yeah, the beautiful trees and It's a beautiful facilities city, there. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice walk around there as well. Mm. It's a really nice walk just to relax out, really. Mm. Mm. And you can meet, because there's a lot of campers there too, um, you can meet some interesting people yes. <laughs> if you're inclined to have a conversation. Yeah, and they, sometimes they call in and see us Yeah, um, and have a chat about what they're doing and um, what they're up to. Uh, we some, I mean, last year we had campers that were staying there for, you know, months, and so we got to get to know them a, you know, a lot better. Mm. But, um, yeah, the coffee mornings will be the second Tuesday of the month at the Pigeon and Poultry Hall. Um and Carterton, third Wednesday of the month at the Baptist Church. Um, I hear they had a great uh, final celebration there last year with uh, entertainment by um, Car was it the Carterton Primary School? South, not South End. Uh, it must have been the main Carterton one near the event centre. Uh, who entertained with oh, yes. amazing singing. Mm. So a big shout out to any of those young people that were a part of that. Um, very uh, excited to hear that um, it went so well, and hopefully you enjoyed your ice blocks on the way home, which probably melted pretty fast. Um, Featherston's going to be the second uh, second Wednesday of the month at the Featherston Community Centre. That's um, with the wisdom and well-being people, so that's pretty pretty good. That's pretty good that one down Featherston. Yeah, it's um, lots of involvement. Uh, yeah, it's a very active um, area at the community centre, which is fabulous. If you've got any queries about what's going in your on in your community and you don't have a computer to find out, because I know they have details on their website, you can just pop in um, and speak to the staff there. Uh, and Martinborough, first Wednesday of the month at the St Andrew's Anglican Church. So all of those are start at 10 o'clock, apart from Featherston, which is 10.30. Um, and I am actually at Featherston on the fourth Wednesday, so it's the, the second Wednesday is the coffee morning. The following fortnight I'm there from 11 till one o'clock so anyone that's got anything that they want to discuss about what we do at Age Concern or um, yeah, specific questions uh, if I can't answer them on the day I will follow up with you or you know make arrangements to get some information out to you on what you're requiring so please yeah come and see me because that's an, an outreach that we sort of started late last year and um, it takes a while for people to get to know what's what's available and what we're doing so please pop in and see me um, and if you want to make an appointment specifically just give me a call um, you can catch me at the office on 377 and ask to be put through to my cell phone and I can make a specific um, appointment time for you which would be great um, because that way I can find out some information if I don't have it on hand um, so that I can yeah serve you better when you come and meet with me at the community centre um, and that is, hmm, yeah, as I say, anything that you're needing to know or if you want some follow-up on what's happening around the fitness side, I'm pretty sure that that has all um, started up already. Um, so our number again is 06 366 so that's uh, Steady As You Go, which is in Featherston on Mondays at 930 um, at the Assembly of God um, in Birdwood Street. Uh, steady as you go and Masterton is on Monday at 1.30 p.m. and Thursday at 9.30 at the Senior Citizens Hall in Cole Street. So um, you've got a couple of options there if you want to beat the heat, maybe go on Thursday at 9.30, <laughs> although it's probably at this stage, I think it was still 21 degrees when, when I left home this morning to come here. Oh, it was crazy this morning. Which is crazy. Um, Carterton Steady As You Go is on a Wednesday at 1.30 at the Baptist Church. Um, and we also have Keep Fit classes on um, at the Senior Citizens, Citizens Hall again in Masterton at uh, 9.30 on a Monday and 10.30 on a Thursday. Um, and line dancing, 10.30 at the Senior Citizens Hall um, on a Monday. Uh, yeah, line dancing, 
I think we've discussed the uh, the issues with line dancing that you have to go the right way, otherwise you end up <laughs> <Bringing into laughs> not people. dancing. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, there's a lot on still. Um, but yeah, even if you're getting out and able to do some walking, um, that's a good option in the mornings while it's cool as well. Mm. Gets you set up for the day, get all that work done and back to bed at nine just for a rest <laughs> or just a little bit of a nap on the couch or yep. something. But yeah. Even if you're at the point where uh, you're just starting out and you haven't been able to walk very, very, very far, have a look at the steady as you go class. Mm. Um, that's always helpful. That one there, and because you, you do most of it um, sitting down, you do most of it sitting down, and then um, after a while, and it's a ten week class. Uh, after six weeks. What I've found anyway, and talking to a, a lot of the people that go there, they've found that they've been able to walk a little bit further. You know, they used to find it difficult to walk to their back door. And um, then they started walking to their letterbox. Mm. And that was all because they learned, they were in the chair, standing up and sitting down, standing up and sitting down, um, pretending to walk, oh, walking on the spot actually. And after a while, they were able to um, go a little bit longer, a little bit further, and they, they changed um, what they used to do mm. and do something that was really great in terms of um, their walking. And some of them are walking, you know, uh, quite a long way at the moment, you know, two Ks, five Ks. Wow. I know. Um, a lot of time around Henley Lake or the different other walks or they'll meet at a coffee shop with some friends and then go for a walk around the neighbourhood. Mm. It's great. It is absolutely great. What about some of the other classes, uh, the other services that we provide? We do have a visiting service, don't we? We sure do. Yeah. Lindsay Parks um, is our coordinator for that. And I know she's busy. She's had some new referrals and she's got some new volunteers that she's been training. So the visiting service is, <clears throat> excuse me, for for people that don't have the opportunity or can't get out um, and it's for... Um, social connections um, so that people have someone that they can have a chat to yeah. um, which is really important because I think otherwise you know you don't have anything to look forward to and um, as humans we do have a very social um, side of um, ourselves and that makes us feel um, valued I think if, if we have those social connections that you know people are interested in talking to us or interested in what we're doing and it makes us feel like we've got more of a purpose with life mm. um, so she if you have someone that might need some sort of um, visiting service um, you can contact Lindsay and have a chat about it we have an, a fabulous website you can even make those inquiries through the website and she will get in contact with you and discuss you know the actual process as well um, the visitor will come uh, regularly once a week um, for an hour and um, it could be anything like playing, having a conversation about what's going on um, in the community or what's going on in the world or table tennis. No, probably not table tennis, maybe seated table tennis. <laughs> well, the virtual um, one on the screen. Yeah, uh, playing Scrabble or, you know, those sorts of things that keep our mind taking over as well. Might even be assisting with doing crosswords and mm. or doing something new that you might want to do um, around um, things that keep our brain active as well. Mm. So, uh, yeah, contact Lindsay through, through us on 06 377 um, Again, you can be put through to her cell phone. You don't need to know that number because sometimes that's a bit harder to remember. Um, and she will get in contact with you and she'll come and visit you, mm -hmm. see what, or visit the person that you might want to refer, or you might be the person you might be referring yourself. Have a chat to see what your needs are and whether she thinks you qualify for that assistance. Um, and our visitors are very um, stringently um, checked out. Yeah. We have a police um, check as well to make sure that that's um, all up above board. And so, they do have to go through training as well. Yeah. Yeah, to be the visitors. It's not yeah. just someone off the street. Mm. No, no. Um, you know, our visitors, our volunteers, mm. uh, who we really rely on 
to help with our organisation in many aspects, and they are vetted. Yeah, and very professional. And be, very professional. Yeah, yes, and Lindsay are. does a great training system, and she also um, is in contact with them regularly to make sure everything's going well, so that's cool. Mm. Um, and our other main... Uh, activity is run through Buddy Up with Rachel. Uh, she's having a short break at the moment, well deserved. Um, well she's deserved. been extremely busy. Also our editor of our, of our magazine. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so she, the Buddy Up, is a fabulous um, op uh, opportunity to, uh, if you're feeling like you need some social connections, um, she can connect you with other people of liked interest. Um, and it might be something that is already, there might be a club or something like that out that already plays cribbage or something that you might be interested in learning. Mm -hmm. um, she will connect you with those organisations that are already running. Mm -hmm. But she can also create, um, you know, get a group of people that might be doing something a bit different that's not catered for in our community. Mm -hmm. and, and do the introductions and, yeah, don't be shy. This could be your a New Year's resolution that you get out and learn something new and meet some new people. Yeah. yeah. And the difference between Buddy Up and the visiting service is that the Buddy Up is a group activity mm. where the a visiting service is one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, social isolation. That we want to combat that mm. because, as Susie said, we all have values. We all have stories and we all need to be a part of community. What did that one say? A man is not an island unto himself but part of a continent, joined together to make things prosper. Something mm. like that anyway. Something like that. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> it's never too, never too late to learn something new or meet new people mm. because there are a lot of people out there that um, you know, uh, want to make those social connections. Someone even to go out and have coffee with, go for a walk around Henley Lake with, um, or you know, in groups or you know, mm. those different situations. Mm. Mm. I'll tell you something that I was really... Um, touched with over the holidays and there was a couple of quotes from um, Einstein okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they went like this they went like this if you want your child to be able to be clever or intelligent read them fairy tales if you want them to become more intelligent read more fairy tales Logic will get you from A to Z, but imagination will get you anywhere you want to go. <laughs> I thought that was quite cool. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is true, isn't it? Imagination. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Logic will get you from A to Z. And the reason why we have, we read our uh, fairy tales to our younger um, Tamariki. So that we can expand their imagination, mm. so it'll take them to wherever they want to go. All they need to do is think, then create. Because mm. mm. oh, an imagination can um, create goals that become reality mm. too, can't they? I mean, you can imagine the the lovely thing about fairy tales is you can read into them what you want to, and you can imagine. Um, what was it? The Selfish Giant. I, oh, you like that story? Oh my goodness. I Every time I listen to it, um, for those uh, listeners that maybe used to listen to the radio uh, <laughs> children's stories on a Sunday, um, yeah, The Selfish Giant. Everyone would have their own idea of what The Selfish Giant looked like or what his garden looked like in winter. Yep. But yep. the description um, through the storytelling you know, you could just make it up in your head of what was going on, but we would all have different ideas on how that looked. But yeah, that storytelling was, is just amazing because we teach through storytelling we as do. well. Yeah, that was one of my favourite <laughs> stories. Was the um, was the selfish giant, mm. yeah, and how he changed. You know, how he changed over time as yeah. who gave you permission to be in my garden? Yeah. Nay. But I am the spirit of love. Yeah. You once let me into your garden. Today, you can come and play in my garden. Mm. It was sad. You make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. Yeah. I absolutely love that story. Anyway, <laughs> so we've talked about visiting service. We talked about buddy up. What about, uh, we talked about our exercise classes, our social outings. What about... Elder abuse. Oh, elder abuse. So that's um, our uh, role at uh, Age Concern, 
is working with um, people around um, supporting them through periods that there may be some they may be suffering some form of harm through elder abuse mm. uh, which um, yeah can be quite soul destroying and um, I guess the idea of you being connected um, and maybe doing some of our other activities uh, helps you to build up your um, your mo or builds up your mojo and makes you less likely to be susceptible to um, some form of elder abuse because normally people take advantage of someone that may not um, yeah have that strong character. Mm. Um, Part of it too is also is that uh, we. In order for us to control someone, we must isolate them. Mm. So if we don't isolate them and uh, teach them how to have a voice, then that incident reduces because they have a voice and they're not, as you said, they're confident to speak out. Mm. Yeah, And that's not only for the, the person who's being abused, but anyone else as well who knows of a person who might be um, subjected to some form of elder abuse, that they speak out too, otherwise we can't hear it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because the main, I guess the main thing behind elder abuse too is that psychological and as you say, isolation um, and making someone feel um, not worthy or mm. dumb or um, an issue you know, you're causing issues with the Fano and all mm. sorts of things, and yeah, making fe people feel very sad and unable to reach out and ask for help. So um, yeah, people that are, I would call them the uh, the community or the onlookers, seeing something like that happen, and they know that that's not right, um, to contact us and have a discussion around how we can support them mm. um, to support that person, or you know, maybe contacting that person ourselves. Mm. Um, yeah, it's um, a lovely process to go through um, making that connection with someone um, and having a chat to them because some people don't realise that it is elder abuse, um, mm. if the financial abuse um, is quite a huge one as well. Just that, just you know, that slight adding of someone's, um, you know, you, and when you're going to get groceries for someone and adding something here and there that you know, or whoops, I need to get that for my you know, for my uh, house or groceries or something and not letting the older person know because quite often they are unaware of what's going on the mm -hmm. um, on the bill. And because we have pay wave and stuff like that these days, uh, you don't have to put a PIN number in sometimes. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So please, if you think that there is some, something going on for someone and an older person, um, give us a call and, and we can help you out, find some information out and make some inquiries for yeah, you. Absolutely. The other part of that too is um, the people who are the caregivers. Yeah, sometimes it's because the caregivers are being burnt out. So if you know, or if you're a caregiver yourself who is struggling, contact us as well, mm. um, because we want to be able to support you. Yeah, we know that it's difficult uh, looking after someone 24 seven and are you not getting a rest? Mm. We understand that. And if you need some help, call us. Yeah, because we can direct you through your GP to get assistance through Focus. Mm. Um, there's lots of um, care in our community, and there's also opportunities to have respite care if you're full time caring for someone. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we yeah, realistically it's our far known we don't normally treat people un, you know, without um, showing some respect. But when we're tired and in this heat as well. Mm. Um, we get a bit short fused um, and yelling or speaking inappropriately to someone. Um, it doesn't show bruises and stuff like that, but it breaks them down and is, un, you know, it's not good for their peace of mind and makes them even more feeling that feeling of isolation mm. and lack of respect. So, mm. And even the person who is, say, like a Kira who is um, struggling at the moment, they'll start feeling guilty as well. Mm. Why am I doing that? And it'll cause problems with their own mental health. Yeah. So please reach out. Please reach out. Mm. That's um, our number is 06 377 0066. That's 06 377 0066.
And if you want to contact us on our webpage, it's www.ageconcern.y.org.nz. Yeah. Or just type in Age Concern Wadarapa and you'll find our website. Mm. Okay, all good. All good with that. <laughs> but we also have a new uh, program that's going to start shortly. Um, and it's called Life Curve. It's an interesting one. It's an app. It's actually an app that you download to your phone. And in it, it helps you with identifying um, everyday activities that you might be struggling with. It asks you a series of questions. There's 15 questions, actually. Can you walk to the letterbox? Can you cook yourself a meal? Can you do heavy washing? Can you do heavy uh, housework or, or light housework? Can you tie the shoes? Uh, tie your shoes. Can you cut your toenails? Things like that. Okay. What they've found is, uh, is that 80% of our health is related to our own decisions. 20% is genetic, but 80% is what we do. Okay. So if we can change just little things, set goals for ourselves and change just little things, we're able um, to change our perspective life curve. Okay, I remember having a dream once. I think I shared it in the um, program a couple of sessions, a couple of programs ago, where I dreamed I was 300 years old. <laughs> and my granddaughter said to me, Koro, what did you leave me for my inheritance? And at that time, I said, I leave you with gout. I leave you with uh, respiratory disease. I leave you with coronary disease. And I thought to myself, what the heck is that type of gift? That sucks. <laughs> I want to leave it with that. And so I made some life-changing decisions um, so that they wouldn't be the gifts, they wouldn't be the gifts that I gave um, my granddaughter. Um, and so simple things like, as I said before, um, standing up and sitting down in your seat a lot instead of just sitting in your seat. Going and making yourself a cup of tea. It's the going, it's the movement that helps. Okay, Walking to your letterbox. Then walking to the end of the street. Uh, these are some of the things that, according to research, uh, helps with changing um, the way that your situation could be in the future if you're older. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, that's going to be starting very shortly. Do they also question you on what you eat? Uh, yes, that's part of the nutrition stuff here. Yeah. Um, we do. Like, I'll give you an easy one. Well, I think it's easy. Um, when you cook your bacon bones or your pork bones, <laughs> put, it in the, leave it, put it in the fridge for a day, take all the fat off. Cook it up the next day with your vegetables and stuff. <laughs> Just that. Mm. Okay, then you don't have all that fat um, in your in your food. So okay. what's what's the age group it's mainly targeting? Mainly targeting, say, 55 onwards. Mm. Okay. Um, for Māori and Pacifica, 65 for normal stuff in terms of um, age people. Mm. But as I said, uh, it's about managing you, taking control of your own destination in terms of your life. Mm. So that, because uh, we, so that, because hmm? we all know as we get older, if those bad decisions that we made in our forties and fifties will kick our butt later on. Yeah, and um, again, that's really cool that you said that, Susie, because I heard of a professor uh, once who said to his audience, "When you're forty, you should be looking." to go to the gym often or doing a lot of exercises. So when you um, become 80, it'll be easy for you to pick up a cup and have a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. It was quite interesting. Okay, and as I said, um, in terms of the life curve, we have life curve navigators come and help you with your questions, uh, answering your questions and helping you facilitate change. They'll ask you to set um, goals because this, remember, it's about you and how you want to, um, and what you want to do to change. 
If you haven't got a phone, can you have put it on a tablet or a PC? Yes, absolutely. Because I know that um, the issue around phones, for, even for me, is that it's hard to see and we need to use our glasses, but it's a lot more pleasant to see um, a bigger screen. Yeah, uh, you can download, You can have a look at it on your iPad, your tablet, whatever. Yeah, as long as it's a device, mm. okay, and there will people, be people to help you walk through it. Nice. Uh, and then what we do is... We Collect the information and see where you're going, and say if you achieve your goal, great. We we'll help you set another goal, and see if you can achieve that. If you don't achieve your goal, we review it and say, I wonder why that was. We we'll just change the goal. Mm. Yeah, and so, but there'll be someone walking beside you uh, along your journey. And how long okay. is your journey? How long is a piece of string? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> because I know it's it's great when new things come in. Yeah. Um, they're not just for 10 weeks. It's something that yeah. is ongoing. And um, because we know that, you know, as we're ageing, assistance is great when it's uh, there mm. um, a longer period. Yeah. Or as long as a piece of ball of string. That's right. Because the other part of it too is that once we start um, getting good at setting goals, having little goals to achieve the bigger goals mm. we become confident in what we're doing and we take that on as a skill but then also with that we pass that skill on to our mukupuna mm. you know, and say to them you know how are you going to achieve this and then go through it with them as well so that they when they become 80 or when they become older you know, they are able to be fit healthy because of the decisions you helped them to make when they were younger, mm. or you showed them uh, you were the template uh, and how to change. Mm. I think it's a great opportunity, you know. So, so is it? Um, where has this life curve come from? It's come from Newcastle. It's some research that was taken out of um, Newcastle about ten years ago, I think, and um, scientifically proven. And it's something that over, I think, over a, a long time that they've generated what will be helpful for people um, who are ageing. It took a while because you had to wait till people got older. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but the other thing of it too, it is, it is free. Okay. And the main goal is that we don't lose our independence mm. as we grow older or the abilities that we have. Yeah, because that's the biggest worry, isn't it, as we get older. We're normally living on our own as older people, and right. um, we, we need like to be to. fit and yeah, have our own space, yeah. do our own thing, have a cat, have a dog. Yeah. Yep, Absolutely. all those sorts of things that we value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, so that we can carry on doing it as long as we can mm. because of the decisions and the choices that we've made um, before this time. It impacts on our life. Mm. As I said, 80% of it is malleable, of our health is malleable. We can change it. Anyway, Fano, this was our first uh, session back uh, for 2024. We look forward to 2024 and what it might bring, whether it is good or bad. Yeah, mm. exactly. Or bad. It's all about how we how we uh, strategize and and keep ourselves happy about what's going on. The other mm. thing too, I think, is great if people if want they want to contact us about something that we might have missed um, last year that you'd be interested in hearing about um, because you know we can get guest speakers in and um, yeah, okay. focus on something you want to hear about, which is great. Okay, okay, so you see, say hey, Cornelia. Hey, Cornera. Listeners, <laughs> thank you very much for your time today, uh, Fano, and see you next month on the third monday of the month oh remember this year is leap year <laughs> 29 days not 28 like hey, a frog <laughs> matiwa matiwa